What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over brute forcing with bitmasks. I know this is like one of those topics where it's like super duper confusing because like bitmasks are like what? One zero, one zero, zero one, stuff like that. And I know it's pretty difficult to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you guys how bitmasks work and why they work for brute forcing. Okay, so let's actually do a problem where given a set of numbers, let's, so given a set, so this is a problem. Given a set of numbers, find all possible subsets. We're going to brute force this using bitmasks. And what do I mean by a subset? So let's say I'm given these set numbers of 1, 2, and 3. I want you to brute force and give me all possible subsets. So a subset basically is it's like a set of numbers from this 1, 2, and 3 where you could pick values off of it. right? I could pick 1. That will be a subset of 1, 2, 3 right? because I picked that one number of 1. Right, I could pick one from one, two, three. I could pick two from one, two, three. That'll be another number, another subset out of the numbers one, two, and three. So let's actually label all possible subsets you could have. Okay, the sake of this video, when I say set, one, two is the same thing as two, one. One, two, this is going to be equal. This is equivalent to two, one. And the reason why this is equivalent to two, one is because you're picking one and two, and those two values, it's the same thing as picking two and one. Now let's actually label all possible subsets of this problem. So given one, two, and three, how many different subsets can I pick? First of all, I could pick nothing, right? So I just pick an empty set. So this is just gonna be empty, right? I pick nothing, right? Then empty set is just nothing, right? Because this is a possibility of picking a subset out of the set one, two, three. I just pick nothing, right? What else can I pick? Well, I could pick one by itself. So that'll just be one. So that'll be a, a, sing a single number one. I just pick one, right? out of the set, set of one, two, three. I could also just pick two, just pick the single number two, and I also could just pick three, right? So this is another subset, three. What about other possible values? Well, I could, for one, I could pick one and two, right? I could pick one, two, because that's that's a, another way I could pick one, two. I could pick one and three. What else could I pick? I could pick one, two, and three. So pick the, all the values of the subset, right? All the values, so one, two, and Now, what about two? Well, uh, two, I could pick one and two again, but. Two and one is the same thing as one, two. So we're not going to pick, choose one. We could pick two and three because we haven't chosen that yet. So let's actually pick two and three. We cannot pick three and three because that's just by itself. So that doesn't count. There's not, there's not another three number here. So that doesn't count. Yeah, that's it. That's all we could pick for two. All right. So now let's look at three. Three, we could pick three, one, but we already wrote three, one, right? We, we already have one and three. We could pick three, two, but we already wrote two and three, right? So Three, three, you can't really pick a th three, three because that's just itself number, right? We don't have another three here, so yeah. So how many different possible subsets do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and also eight. Eight, eight of these subsets, right? So given the length of this set, this length is equal to three, right? There's three numbers, right? One, two, and three, this length of the set the cardinality of the set, how the size of it is three because it's three numbers. Given this, the all the counting of all the possible subsets we have, we have a total of eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's try to represent this eight as a mathematical function considering the number of uh, values we have, the, the size of our set. So our size of our set is three, right? So wait a minute, eight is actually a third, right? And this three, is the same thing as this n of our value of n, the size of our set. So the number of total number of possible subsets we have is actually two to the n. Two to the n, where n is the size of our set. So two to the n is the total possible subsets. If we're gonna compute all the possible subsets, we know we have a total of two to the n. So that means that our outer loop that we write in the code is going to be two to the n, because we have to go through all the possible subsets, and that's the total possible subsets, two to the n. So how do you write that in bits? To, to write this in bit equivalents, so every time you shift to the left, you multiply it by two. Remember, recall that if I shift down like this, I shift down, right? Whenever I shift something down like like this, right, I'm actually multiplying the value by two. So if I want to get this, this two to the n in, into the equivalents, I'm actually going to actually shift this the current value of one, right? Shift it down n times, right? Because this is going to multiply multiply this value one by two n times, 
okay, in terms of bit equivalence. Like every time I shift something down to the left, you're actually multiplying the current number by two. So this number one, I'm actually gonna multiply it by two every single time for n, okay? So that's what this, this is doing. This outer loop that we're gonna go through is gonna start from i equals zero, and it's gonna go up to one shift left to the n, right? Because this is gonna go through all the different possible subsets values of it, okay? Now let's talk about the inner loop. Now how are we going to get every single possible initial value in our set by brute forcing? Simple. Based on our original set, one, two, and three, right? How are we gonna get every single value for each outcome? So one, one, two, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, and an empty set. How about I label each value in the set representing one if I'm including it, zero if I'm not. So for an empty set, that means I'm not including any values. So this empty set, we're not including any values. So, um, so what does that mean? So that means all the values here, one, two, and three, I'm not I'm gonna include one, so I'm put it as zero. Now I'm gonna include two, so I'm gonna put it as zero. And three, I'm not gonna include that either. So this bit equivalent is going to be zero, 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 okay? Now let's look at one. If I'm gonna include one, what does that mean? That means I include the, the first value of one, so that'll be, that'll be a one, but then I'm not including the rest, so I'm gonna put zeros for those, okay? Two, two, that means I'm gonna include the second value, two, but I'm gonna not include one and three, so I'm gonna put zero, one, zero, okay? All right, now let's talk about three. So have a one for three, and then the rest would be zeros, okay? So I hope you guys started starting to see a pattern here. Okay, so if we're gonna look at one, two, we're gonna include one and two. So we're gonna have ones in the places of one and two. And the third one, we're not including it. So this third value, we're not including it, so we're gonna put a zero there. Let's see two, three. Two, three is going to uh, not include one, so we're gonna put zero there. And then values of two and three, we're gonna include there, so put one, one. Okay. Um, and then one, two, and three. One, two, and three is a, hopefully, hopefully you guys can see this. One, two, and three, we're gonna include all of them, so that would be one, one, one. Okay? Because we're including all values, one, one, one. Okay, so I basically just relabeled the, all the possible subsets with the equivalents of one zeros, just, just rewriting it so that it's more readable for you guys. Now, what we have to do is we have to go through all the bits from zero up to the length of our current set and check if it's turned on. Because if the bit is equivalently turned on, so if like this this bit is turned on, right? We turn this bit on, then that we we include that into the set. Right, so if we, we could see here too, this bit is turned on, right? Including two, this bit is turned on, and this bit is also this bit is also turned on, right? And then basically, guys, now what we have to do is we ha we need to check if the current bit in the original number is actually turned on, right? So current bit is turned on. So we're gonna loop through the numbers from two up to two dn, right? From all the possible combinations. So this is eight. There's eight choices, right? I have to go through all eight and then turn on the ones uh, for each value. We have to turn it on. So in this case, zero, there's no, nothing turned on, right? All the bits are all zeros. So we just do nothing there, okay? Now, if, if it's a one, right? Basically, we need to turn on all these bits. So how many bits are there? There's three of them, right? There's there's a places of three and we need to turn each one of these on. So like if this one, this bit is one right we have to turn this on so that's why we got to include this value and this one we have to just we turn this bit on to also include this and this one we have to also include this so let's actually convert each of these numbers into its equivalent number form to make sure you guys actually understand the bits so here uh zero 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 is going to be zero because it's still the same thing um one zero zero in base two is to the second which is four this is going to be four this is going to be two uh this is going to be one, we're gonna be six, it's gonna be three. All right, so one, zero, one is gonna to equal to uh, four plus one is five, so this is gonna be five, okay? So this one is gonna be three plus four is seven, yeah, this is gonna be seven. So now we have the equivalent number form, so this is gonna be one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, we need to basically turn on these bits, right? The, uh, uh, the equivalent ith bit. So um, if you want to turn these bits on, right, you have to loop through the number of values in your array. So this is going to be three because there's three bits, right? Three bits of these. It's going to loop through these three bits. And we're going to actually just uh, check if the current bit is turned on. Okay, so our outer loop goes from zero to 
8, right? Because this is going to go 0 to 8. So this is going to go to uh, not including 8, right? So it's going to go to 7, right? Our inner loop is actually going to go from 0 to 3, right? Because there's three, there's three bits that we have to turn on. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to and the outer, our outer loop of the i value is going to and it with one shift left down by j. And I'm going to explain why this is the case. One shift down by j, if you recall, means that we are going to keep multiplying this current value by 2. And whenever you shift something down, you are actually padding values to it, padding equivalent bits to it. So let's go over an example. Let's say our, our i value is 5. Okay. Now, what does 5 represent? Uh, in binary, 5 represents 101. Let's actually pad a 0 in front of it just to have, make sure we have four numbers. Okay, we could do that. So what is my inner loop going to do? My inner loop is going to go to 0, 1, 2, and 3. And what do I do? Basically, if I shift left by j, that means I'm going to include one bit and then I'm going to pad zeros to the right. Okay, so in this case, if j is 0, what, what's going to happen to one shift left by by zero. So if I do one shift left by zero, that means I don't change anything, right? I don't actually change anything. So in this case, right, j is equal to zero. So if I'm shifting left by zero, one shift left by zero, uh, I'm not going to pad anything. So that's going to just be a one to the end here. And then you have a bunch of zeros here. So now what does this do? So remember, this is our, this, this value is one. Uh, so this the value of on the bottom is one shift right by zero. So that's what this bit, this value is doing. Okay. So this, this is what it's, this is what representing this, this, okay. So now when we and it by I, so this is our I, our I, this is our five, right? Five, I is equal to five. So this is what this represents zero, one, zero, one. Now, if I and both of these, basically all values that are ones, uh, both ones are going to become one. The rest are going to become zeros, right? So if I and and all these together, one one becomes one, and the rest becomes zeros. So this means that I'm going to include the first value of a uh, one here, which is going to be three. I'm going to include this three. Okay. And when j becomes one, and now what happens when j becomes one? So now I'm going to shift one left by one. So that means that. At this point, I'm going to pad of a one here, and then I'm going to have a zero here, right? Because I just shifted left by one. Originally, zero, 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 one. Now I shifted left by one. So now I have one zero. So I have one zero on the right. And the rest of these are zeros, okay? So now what happens when I add these together, right? I add these together. Well, one zero becomes zero. One, uh, zero, one becomes zero. One zero becomes zero. Zero, zero becomes zero, okay? These are all zeros, right? That means that. No matter what, I'm not actually including anything, right? And this value, this number here, is not greater than uh, greater than zero, right? So th this basically means that I just included nothing. So I'm not actually going to include anything to the set, okay? When j becomes 2, we have 1 here. And we padded two zeros to the back, right? Because we just sh we shifted our left uh, value of uh, our value of 1 to the left by two, right? So originally it was zero, 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 one. Now we shifted it down by two. So now this is what uh, one shift left by two is, okay? This is what it's doing. Now I'm gonna add a zero to the front, okay? So now when you add both of these, one zero becomes zero, zero, zero becomes zero. One, one is one, zero, zero becomes zero, right? Now we have zero, one, zero, zero. Is this value greater than zero? Right? Yes, it is. Because we have 0, 1, 0, 0. And this represents in binary uh, 4, right? This represents binary 4. And this is greater than 0. So this means that we're going to include the set of 1. So the set of 1. So basically, this is going through every single possible subset possible. By going through every number from 0 to 8, not including 8, by the way, not including 8. And also 0 to 3, uh, not including 3, because we're, we're going to go up to, but not including 3. So it'll go to 0, 1, and 2. And it's going to include whichever bits that is turned on. And it'll, it'll just print those values. That'll be considered as one subset. Okay? So I hope, I, uh, I hope this makes a little more sense. 
and then uh, we could just show you the code now. All right, guys, so basically what I did was, here's the code, I create a vector, which is an array of values one, two, and three, just like what we said in the example. And here I create my value n is equal to three, n is the size of the set of three, so that's why I said n equal to three. three uh, n is just like a variable I initialized to three. Four, uh, I'm looping from i equals zero, and I'm going up to, but not including, one shift left by n. So this is going to be i less than equal to, uh, less than eight. That's what this is doing. And then i plus plus. Uh, this j is going to go from zero, and it's going to go up to n, which is going to be three. So this is going to be j is going to go from zero to three, and j plus plus. Then if if the current value is my current i value, and by one shift left by j is greater than zero, then I'm going to include the value in my subset. Otherwise, I don't. So in the end, it's actually going to go through all possible subsets. So if we actually run the code right now, uh, each subset is actually the inner loop, right? So each subset that we're running is this inner loop, right? So that's going to, uh, that's each subset. So the first time it printed out uh, empty, which is going to be nothing in the subset, then it prints out one, then it prints out two, then it's going to print out one and then two, then it's going to print out just three, then it's going to print out one and three, then it's going to print out two and three, and then it's going to print out one, two, and three. So we actually could step inside each iteration of the loop and to explain to you guys what, what it's doing. So here I'm going to step into side. Okay, so we start out with zero initially, and j is zero. So now um, one shift left by zero is just one and i is zero. So all these values are going to be zero. So um, yeah, it's going to be zero. So it's not going to do anything. Um, then um, remember i is still zero, right? So then uh, j is zero right now. J is, uh, j is actually going to become one now, right? Because we just stepped in. So j is now one, right? Here we see j is equal to one. And now we're going to shift one down by one, which is going to pad a zero at the end. And um, because our i value is zero, it's also not going to do anything, right? Because our i value is all zero, so it's not going to do anything. So that's not include anything again. And then when it's two, j is two, um, our i value, is, i value is still zero, so it's not going to include anything. So this basically just included nothing throughout the whole set, and that's why it's empty. The first part is just going to be empty, and that's why it prints out a new line. All right, now our i value is one, so that's uh, equivalent to zero, zero, one, right? And now we're gonna go through all th the bits of three, right? Okay, so now here, uh, is j is zero, so um, j is zero, right? So if we shift left by zero, uh, the last bit is just one, right? So uh, one and one is going to be one, so I think we do include this, yeah, we do include it. So we're gonna include uh, j of zero, so that's going to be uh, one. Yeah, so we're going to include one, current value one. So we include that, and that's why it prints out one. But now um, j is one, and uh, when j is one, we shift left by one. So that's going to be uh, shift left by one is going to be I think zero one two zero two one two right. Um, and because our i is one, uh, there's no bits on the other side, so it's not going to include these also, right? So yeah, it didn't include anything else. So now we print out a new line. So we just only included the value of one. Okay. Um, now our i value is two, and our j value is. We're going to go through all the bits and check if the value of bits is set for all the bits of two. So if we look at two, um. If only we could look at the bit equivalents in the allocator, but they don't give us that. Damn. Okay. But anyway, uh, this should be... There's actually a way to convert this into assembly, but I don't have... Not sure if I could do that here. Ah, okay. Damn. Whatever. Anyway, um, 2 is just going to add the first 2 bit. Uh, for when i is equal to 2, it's going to... Yeah. Let's see if it adds those. So it includes this one. It includes two and then it doesn't include the rest. So yeah, for two, it just includes two. It doesn't include the rest, so it's empty. For three, uh, let's see, what does it include? Oh, it includes one and two. Yeah, so it includes one and then it includes two. 
and then it doesn't include the three, right? Because for a three, there's uh, the bit equivalence of three is one, one, zero, right? Bit equivalence of three is one, zero, so we only include one and two, right? And we don't include the third one. Okay, um, now let's see, am I at four? Yeah, uh, four is include first one, I think, three, yeah, just three. Okay, um, so yeah, so that's going to be including three, so that's just gonna give us three. Okay, uh, we could keep keep going, continue going on this, but uh, yeah, let's see, five, what does that include us? Five, it gives us uh, one and three, okay, yeah. And if you just continue going on through all end choices, you're gonna get all the values. So, but that's basically what this code is doing. Um, yeah, I just went through all of them, but uh, yeah. It, it's basically converting the the i value number into its equivalent bit equivalents and then including those values to check if they're right or not. So that's basically how you do this problem. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, how I explained bits. I might do more videos on how to use bit, uh, bit masks to include sets. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.